Hello and welcome to Sudokood. In this video, we are going to talk about builder design pattern, where we will discuss what are the problems in object-oriented programming that are solved by builder pattern, followed by with some analogy and examples of builder pattern. And then we are going to see what is the difference between implementing a builder pattern versus using a builder pattern. I will try to give examples of both. Then we will see a code walkthrough of how we can implement a builder pattern, followed by summary and pros and cons of builder pattern. So let's get started. Since builder pattern is a creational design pattern and it is utilized for creation of objects, but the problem that builder pattern specifically solves is creation of complex objects. Whenever there are scenarios which end up in classes which have complex constructors, builder pattern comes to rescue. One of the solutions for those complex constructors is telescoped constructors, but again, telescoped constructors are not able to solve the problem in a way that builder pattern can solve. Builder pattern also helps with classes and objects which require the functionality of immutability. And also, once implementing the builder pattern, there is less need for exposing the setters of a class. We will see all of this in our code walkthrough of how these problems are solved using builder pattern. But before that, let Let's try to understand the concept and ideology behind the build pattern through an analogy. Let's consider a scenario of building a wardrobe. As you know, wardrobes can be of multiple types. They can have one door, two doors, multiple doors. There can or cannot be mirrors on the wardrobes. Also, the material of the wardrobe can be metal, wood, plastic or something else. There can be a feature of hanging rods in the wardrobes and the number of compartments in a wardrobe can vary. Some wardrobes might, might come with wheels as well. As you might have guessed by now that some features in the wardrobes are going to be essential like the doors and locks and so on. But some features like the mirror on the wardrobe door or the wheels might be optional for some particular wardrobes. If we have to code it then this is how the code is going to look like. There would be a class wardrobe with the fields as doors, mirror, hanging roads, compartments and wheels. And the constructor of the wardrobe would be something like this. One constructor would take doors and mirror as parameters, another might take door, mirror and wheels, one might take door, mirror, wheels and compartments and there would be one constructor which take all the parameters. Now, this seems to be perfectly decent code and you might not see what's the problem with this co code in the first look. But here is the issue. Let's say that you want to build a wardrobe which just has doors, mirrors and compartments. Now, there are two ways to go about it. Either you create a constructor which has door, mirror and compartments or you utilize this particular constructor over here but the value for the hanging road and the wheels is going to be null. Think about the problems that would arise in the code if an extra field has to be added in this class. How many permutations and combinations you would have to manage in order to create those constructors. We will see how builder pattern solves the problem of complex constructors as well as telescoped constructors. But before that, let's first try to understand what's the difference between implementing a builder pattern versus using a builder pattern. I am sure many of you must have already utilized Java's string builder functionality, where you just initialize the string builder and keep appending the strings onto the builder and finally call string. Now, this is the utilization of a builder pattern because a string builder is a builder class which helps you to concatenate strings one after the other and finally returns you a string which you cannot change. This is how you utilize builder pattern. But how do you implement the builder pattern if you have to build something yourself or if there is a use case that you are working on which requires the implementation of builder pattern? In order to understand the implementation of builder pattern, we will take example of URL builder. Let's try to understand how to implement builder pattern. Let's say that we have to implement a URL builder which allows us to form a URL given some parameters. Now, as you know that a URL is composed of protocol, host name, port, path param and query param. Now, you might also know that every URL would need protocol and host name, but every URL might not need port, it might not need path param or it might not need query param. All these three parameters are optional. So you can see the different combinations here that you would need if you go with normal constructor method. Now let's dig deep in the code and understand how we can solve this using builder pattern. Let's try to understand from the code how we can use 
the builder design pattern to create a URL builder class. As you can see over here that there is a URL class over here which has certain fields added to it and then there are certain constructors which take one, two or three parameters or here in this case even four parameters to create an instant instance of this URL class. There are also different getters and setters provided here and this is just for the example you can have either of them you do not need both the setters as well as the constructors. Now let's see in the demo class how the object of URL class is created. This is how we instantiate the URL object. You can also use one of the constructors with the set fields. Here I'm using the setters. Once we instantiate this object and set all the fields, we can see how this code runs. But before doing that, let me just un uncomment this builder code over here. And let's try to run only this part. As you can see, we have the whole value of URL over here. Now. Let's go back to the URL class and see what the issue is. As you can see that there are a number of parameters and hence we have to create a lot of constructors. Now what happens if there is a case when you have to have a constructor which accepts protocol, host name and only path param. Then you would need to create a third constructor and this would just add a lot of lines to your already lengthy code. One problem to solve this is the telescoping constructors and here is how telescoping constructors work. Instead of initializing a lot of constructors, one constructor utilizes the already initialized constructor. As you can see here that we have this constructor over here which uh, has protocol parameter. The another constructor which has protocol and host name utilizes the first constructor. The third constructor over here utilizes this constructor and so on and so forth. This way of coding solves one problem that your code becomes less lengthy but again it does not solve the problem of having multiple combinations. Let's say again the same example that you need a constructor which requires protocol, hostname and path param. In that case you would have to write another constructor and thus telescope constructors do not solve the problem 100%. Here is when the builder pattern comes into the picture. Let's look at the class URL builder. How we will solve it using the builder pattern. For builder pattern, you need to have an inner static class called builder. It has the same fields that the base class has to have. Apart from these fields, it has constructors for all these fields with the only exception that it returns the builder type. It returns the instance of the builder, builder class instead of returning anything else so that this particular instance or this particular object can be plugged into this particular URL builder class and you can get the instance of URL builder class itself. Finally, in the URL builder class, the instance of builder is passed on and it helps to set value of different fields. As you can see here, it's pretty clear that you can add more parameters here. You can remove any parameters if you need. Now let's move on to see how this is actually utilized. And in order to do that, I would have to comment the code and let me comment the code only till here to show you the first example. In this first example, we have first created an object of the builder class and then we are calling the constructor of those builder classes like builder.protocol and we supply the value dot host name. Why this chaining is possible? Because dot protocol is returning this object itself on which you can again, again call host name and on the top of which you can call port. Finally, you call this function builder.build. Let's see what this particular function does. This particular function calls the URL builder class with the builder object itself, which again, as I showed you before, sets all these fields. Now, if we go back to our demo and try to run this particular function, which just prints out all these value, let's see what happens. Before doing that, let me comment out this code so it doesn't create any confusion. Just like the previous class, which was vanilla vanilla Java, or with a, it was not using any design pattern, we have the whole code here using the builder pattern. You have your protocol, host name, and port. Now, in case that you want a particular URL which requires path parameter but does not require any port, what you can do in that scenario is you can call builder two dot protocol host name and only path param. Uh, you can completely skip port and it won't create a difference to your code. Let's try to run this and see. 
as you can see here very clearly we have our another url which has a path param but, but which does not have a port by using this builder pattern you can create any kind of urls you want with any combination of necessary as well as optional features so this is how builder pattern solves the problem of complex constructors as well as on classes which have multiple parameters and do not require all of them to create objects i hope this make things further clear for you now let's go back to the summary i'm sure that after going through the two examples of wardrobe and url builder you would be able to understand how builder pattern is utilized and how it solves problems of having complex constructors and constructors which might have a lot of parameters let's try to summarize what we have learned today there are some pros of using builder pattern it is a good way to handle complexity and complex constructors it is relatively easy to implement than other patterns you just have to use an inner static class typically in a java implementation and this is a pattern that you can refactor your code later into this is not a pattern that you have to start implementing from the scratch however there are some cons as well for example the class instance written by the builder pattern is immutable so you cannot make any changes to that object also it uses an inner static class for implementation which might seem confusing to some folks sometimes the number of lines of code that you have to write can become huge in order to implement a builder pattern although it is not that complex also whenever you are using builder pattern or refactoring your code into builder pattern you have to think of end to end use cases so you have to think of design it is not a con per se but this is a factor that you have to take into account while implementing the builder pattern i'm sure after watching this video it must be clear to you what is a builder pattern how you can utilize a builder pattern and how you can implement your own builder pattern if there is a use case in your work to do so if i have left out anything or if you have any doubts or comments please feel free to leave them in the comment section and i will try my best to get to them till then take care see you in the next video